a Chinese soldier gets lost, and India finds him. Plus, China's hostage diplomacy. And what can the CCP do to find love? That and more on this week's China News Headline. China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. India captured a Chinese soldier along a disputed border. The Chinese corporal apparently got lost. I believe we have footage of the capture. Yeah, okay, that works. This disputed border between India and China has been causing a lot of grief. Earlier this year, Chinese soldiers killed 20 Indian soldiers. So at last, a chance for revenge. The Indian troops fed the captured Chinese soldier a meal. They gave him oxygen and some warm clothes. And then, they returned him. I guess the Indian army is going with the kill them with kindness form of revenge. According to the PLA, the soldier got lost while helping local herdsmen search for missing yaks. Wow, this is a rare story where everyone comes out looking good. Congratulations, everyone. I hope China will treat the Americans it's threatening to kidnap as nicely as the Indian soldiers treated the PLA soldier. Because China is now actually threatening to detain Americans. That's because the U.S. has recently arrested at least five Chinese scholars. Scholars who broke the law by not disclosing their military affiliations on their visa applications, and they may have been spying on U.S. research centers. The U.S. State Department would just like to remind Americans about its travel advisory on China, which they updated back in September to Level 3 Reconsider Travel due to COVID-19 and arbitrary enforcement of local laws. And they specifically call out the risk of arbitrary and wrongful detentions in China and the use of exit bans. Exit bans are when you're not actually in prison, but you can't leave China. Meanwhile, China obviously denies that report and says the U.S. is mistreating the Chinese scholars. So if you're an American in China, should you be worried? We'll have more on that in a future episode, so stay tuned. But China's hostage diplomacy is nothing new. At the end of 2018, China detained two Canadians, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver. That was in retaliation for Canada arresting the CFO of Huawei, Meng Wanzhou. She was accused of violating U.S. sanctions on Iran. Canada still has not been able to get China to release their citizens. And at a high-level U.N. Security Council meeting this week, colleagues of the two detained men appealed directly to China for their release. That happened just days after Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Canada won't stop calling for human rights in China. He said that because the Chinese ambassador to Canada warned Canada not to accept Hong Kong refugees. He said that could have consequences for the health and security for the 300,000 Canadians living in the theoretically autonomous Chinese territory. So he's threatening that if Canada tries to make Hong Kong people safe, China will make Canadians in Hong Kong less safe. Yeah, it sounds like appealing directly to China to release the two Canadian Michaels is probably not going to work. Meanwhile, U.S. diplomats in China are being monitored by the Communist Party. According to leaked documents obtained by the Epoch Times, Chinese authorities see U.S. consulates as hostile forces they conduct infiltration and sabotage activities on Chinese soil and have ordered officials to monitor key U.S. diplomats. Although, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that U.S. diplomats in China probably already knew they are being monitored. According to one leaked document, which is from 2018, the Chinese Communist Party was especially concerned with blocking the consulates from establishing connections with key Chinese political figures prominent lawyers, public intellectuals, rights defenders, and special interest groups. How did party officials plan to stop that from happening? The document advised officials to use all efforts, including reminders, warnings, 
and a mild degree of force to stop those people from being able to attend events held by the U.S. consulates. Hey, what's wrong with using a mild degree of force on your own citizens? It's for their own good. And we'll be back with more after the break. Welcome back. China has passed an export control law after the U.S. did the same thing to China last month. The controlled items include military and nuclear products, as well as other goods, technologies and services, and relevant data. You know, all the things the U.S. so desperately relies on China for. Meanwhile, China is also forcing Chinese textiles to stop using Australian cotton. That follows similar action on Australian beef and coal. Now, some might call this a trade war, which would be totally unoriginal. And I wouldn't want to accuse the Chinese regime of just copying things that other countries do. As my favorite Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, says, such groundless speculation by Western media outlets is a clear reflection of the Australian government's hostility toward China and its attempt to push China to import more Australia cotton. I mean, sure, China's ban on Australian imports will hurt Australian farmers in the short run, but that's not China's fault. According to the Global Times, this is simply the result of market competition, and the Chinese Communist Party is all about the free market. And don't worry, because China can get all the cotton it needs from Xinjiang, where forced labor is just part of China's incredibly free market. Hey, it's just a mild degree of forced labor. It's for their own good. Sweden has banned Chinese telecom companies Huawei and ZTE because they're controlled by the Chinese state. But that's just the beginning of what happened in the past week around the world. In a virtual summit with Brazil, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the two countries need to reduce their dependence on imports from China. And now, Brazil is saying it won't buy a Chinese-made coronavirus vaccine. The U.S. also blacklisted two Chinese men and six Chinese entities for violating sanctions on Iran. And that comes on top of the U.S. warning to international banks about violating U.S. sanctions on Hong Kong. I don't get it. It's like, for some reason, the world is afraid of the Chinese Communist Party. What more can the Communist Party do to make people love it? Wait, I know. You catch more flies with honey than vinegar, right? China can just sell us some sweeteners. It's the perfect plan. Except the U.S. had to go and seize imports of a Chinese sweetener just because China used a little bit of free market slave labor. The U.S. government found that a Chinese company in Inner Mongolia was producing the sweetener stevia using prison labor. This was the first forced labor finding issued by U.S. Customs and Border Control since 1996. The U.S. agency said that the finding tells U.S. importers who fail to eliminate forced labor from their supply chains that their shipments may be subject to seizure and forfeiture. But what if it's just a mild degree of forced labor? Given what we know about Chinese supply chains, I have a feeling the U.S. government is going to be doing a lot more of these seizures in the future. And now, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, who supports China Uncensored through the crowdfunding website Patreon. James Wahlberg asks, Chris, what will you and the China Uncensored crew do after the CCP is overthrown? Well, that will be a glorious day when the CCP finally bites the dust. At one point, I would have said that as soon as that happens, Matt, Shelley, and I would fly over to China and celebrate and see the sights. I'd say we more than earned a little vacation. But then we started our other show, America Uncovered. And judging by how things are in the U.S., I don't think we'll ever get a vacation. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to America Uncovered on YouTube. Thanks for your question, James. And if you'd like to have me respond to your question or comment on the show for hundreds of thousands of people to hear, Join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army and support us in the battle against the Chinese Communist Party. You can join for as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. You'll also get some other cool perks as well. Head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.